I don't, did you, I don't know, like, do you, there, she's out there. You're the Florida version of Sex in the City, JD. That's when I was smoking my cigar. <laughs> Don't be an asshole today. Hey. Hey. You have no idea how excited I am to finally meet you. Oh, cool your desk, honey. Hey. <laughs> how are you? I'm great. I'm just waiting for my, my rock star co-host to, uh, you know, do her thing. All right. <laughs> But you're looking fabulous. Thank you. A little, it's a little, I'm, I'm looking at this. I usually used to do it on my phone. And now I'm like, maybe I need to start raising my computer up now that I have a new computer. I had a laptop that, the, the I don't know what I did. You know, just, I, lo I looked at the camera and it broke. I don't know what happened, but the camera was never working. And then oh, when no. COVID came around, I noticed, you know, I mean, I never used it otherwise. Yeah, exactly. So it was like, oh, wait a minute. And then the, the, it finally died. We took it behind the barn and shot it and got a new computer. But uh, you doing so you're doing an iPad. No, I have a I have a, a what is it? A, it's a and no, not Android. What do you call it? It's a PC. It's an HP. OK. PC. Oh, you're good. Okay. I have to look to see what brand. It, I just made Jim buy it. I was like, Jim, which of these is best? And he was like, this one's the one to get. And I was like, let's get that one. So that was perfect. It. Hey, there you are. There's JD. <laughs> My rock star co-host, JD. Dan. Hello. Hi, JD. Meet Frank DeCaro. Hi, Frank. Nice to meet you in nice person. You. Thank you. We're as close yeah. to in person as we'll get. Wait, let me. I'm raising my volume there. there All right. Uh, it's, yes, I'm as it's, ready as I'll ever be. You know what, <laughs> Frank? I I swear I've been following you on Facebook for so long. Back in the day when you would do a floor du jour. Oh my God! Oh yeah, I was doing that. I I you know it's there. It's all. It's like therapy in in a for in the group home. I mean, it's it was just <laughs> something that it was something to do. And and I I when we moved, that was kind of when we first moved to LA. And I really wanted to. One of the reasons to move to LA was kind of to, in therapy speak to kind of be more present, to kind of look, kind of to see again instead of just moving through the motions. Right. So that's kind of what what that was. It's been nine years already since we moved here. It's nine. Wow. Amazing. It's amazing. It's so. um it seems like the right fit though. Like I feel Oh, I like love it. Oh my this... God, we're crazy about it. We just yeah. we love it. And right before COVID, we we bought a condo. And it's we are Jim and I right now are as far apart in the apartment as we can be. They, our desks are in the opposite corners <laughs> in two different bedrooms. Um and that's what got us through COVID. If we'd I, I always tell people, I said, if we lived in our last apartment we before this one, we would have fought all the time. And if we lived <laughs> in the one in New York, we'd have killed each other. So uh, it worked out nicely that we're, uh, uh, we did, we got on famously. So. Yeah, the, the lockdown thing was, uh, that was no joke. That was hard. No, but we got on, we, we really did well. <laughs> I think we made it through because my wife was able to get up each morning and walk to her boss's place and actually work from there. Um, so it felt like we didn't miss a step, you know, she's, right, right. you know, went to work while I was working at home and, and it was, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. And JD, you never stopped working. Did you? I never stopped. I couldn't stop because our business, other than me wanting to be a rock star, <laughs> my business is pallets. So everything was still being shipped during that time. Yeah. So we were still working and, you know, thank God we weren't shut down, but I, I had to go to work every day. So I couldn't really enjoy the, uh, the lockdown. Like some people got a chance <laughs> to really do great things like write books and things like that. But I did write a song. Yeah, um, that's, so, so, hey, yeah. don't, that's a song is good. <laughs> I did a book proposal and, and started the book during uh and now i'm really now i'm now it's crunch time now i've really got to put the pedal oh. to the metal and make it happen but uh on a new book but uh i did that but i kind of when freelance dry, writing dried up because i you know i write about happy topics and they they weren't interested in that you know i mean it was, was right it wasn't the you know oh boy 
Funko figurines, my favorite. You know, let's write about the people who collect those. They weren't into those stories at all. So I was SOL, as we say, and had nothing to do. So I treated it like retirement in a way. And I I, uh, I watched, we watched all six seasons in the movie of Downton Abbey in less time than it took Mrs. Pattinson to cook Christmas dinner. We just, we watched, it was, we just, <laughs> breeze through it and it was we were doing five hours at a time and uh it was fun that's and what i read and i you know, we did a lot of binging a lot of yeah. a lot of binging on things you know my my wife's a, a little bit younger uh than me and so there were a lot of things that she um discovered during lockdown like she came right <laughs> running down the stairs one day and said there's this show called the Mary Tyler Moore show that's on and it's in black and white and it's really good. <laughs> so, you know, like we just, that's funny. On, yeah, we just binged on things that like, you know, that maybe she had heard of, you know, but never really saw. So that was fun. Like seeing those, those things through, through her eyes. That was, that was pretty fun. Oh, definitely. But we took in. That like, happens. A lot. That happened to me with Danny, with, with uh, Andy Griffith. She's like, what's Mayberry? I'm like, what's Mayberry? What do you mean, what's Mayberry? It's only Frank, where I want to live. Younger, we have younger partners. <laughs> no, I do. I, Jim is seven years younger than I am, and and uh, but he's such an old soul that old there are soul. Some, yeah, you is. know, some some so, a song from the '50s will come on that his father loved, and suddenly it'll be, uh, you know, he'll he'll be singing all the words. I was like, how the hell do you know all the words? And, and he yeah. does, you know. It so. is. It's uh, it's great. Like that. My yeah. My wife has a, a, a big time old soul, and she loves those period pieces. Uh, you know, movies like that. So we we did a lot of uh, a lot of that kind of stuff too. I, I have to get dragged into those kicking and screaming, like Gentleman Jack. <laughs> you know, like I didn't think I was gonna like it, and then about two or three seasons in, I'm like, this is okay. This is okay. And now the new one's coming out, so we're super thrilled about that. Um, and we love, you know. Saran Jones has a huge following over here in London. I mean, it's just diehard. And she's done so many different things that after I was like, well, this gentleman Jack thing is, this is okay. This is good. We started finding some other things that she was in and it was really, uh, really, really good. Like Dr. Foster, I think was one. And um, this latest one was Vigil. And I think that might be up for a BAFTA. I just read the BAFTA nominations this morning. So yeah, I think Gentleman Jack's going to have an even bigger um, following this year because of the the BAFTA nomination um, for her. She's really good. She's she's really uh, you know she she's real diverse. She can she can play anything. If you can play Gentleman Jack and keep people interested, you know, <laughs> you play Ann Lister and keep people interested. Like there's there's something about you. Um, so Frank, I uh, I think I posted on your on your Facebook that I felt like the universe knew you were coming on and gave us something to talk about as far as the Oscars go. Oh my God. I, I hate the word. Do you want me to just launch or what? Launch. <laughs> launch. launch. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I, I hate a lot of therapy speak and the word trigger triggers me. I'm usually horrified <laughs> by the word trigger. Yeah. <laughs> I was genuinely triggered by what happened on that Oscar telecast. And it wasn't just, the slap it was the slap followed by the standing ovation the right. yelling that was the triggering <laughs> moment because it was yeah. that feeling of i'm on the schoolyard some bully is pummeling me and the other students are cheering him on the crowd is yeah the crowd is cheering and, and the authorities meaning here the academy or the, in that case the teachers aren't stepping in to do anything about it. Yeah. And so it really was, have, has nothing changed since high school. And you know what the answer is? And we kind of knew this going in Hollywood. No, nothing's changed. Probably anywhere. Nothing's changed yeah. since high school, yeah. but particularly yeah. in Hollywood. And it was the standing ovation was the appalling icing on a horror of a cake. You know, yeah. it, right. it was, it was just, and, and ultimately it comes down in my mind that was the most selfish thing to, to to derail everyone's night. Yes. Was not only wrongheaded, it was just selfish. It was and and I, I, I said this, I said it's it's either 
toxic masculine, you know, a, a rampant example of toxic masculinity. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. it's a red flag of mental illness because people who are in their right minds don't do that. Oh, you know, agree. Agreed. I, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, it was so layered for me. Like when I, and of course, mind you, I'm in London, so I didn't even get it until Monday. You know, so I knew you I might have heard the real I, words. We yeah. we all ran to Twitter to hear the f bombs. You know, we we're like, oh I, my god, that's what he said. I I was like, I couldn't even I, I couldn't believe. I feel like Britain woke up and went, what the hell just happened over there? Like that was it was crazy. And it's an it, embarrassment. Yeah. And it was so layered because my first thought was, she she could have hand, she handled it like a champ. She just get eye roll right or a, or wave off or something like that would have really been enough. Like, I just feel like out of all the women, you know, with those guns and that face, you know, she could have handled that on her own. I don't know that she needed him to display, right. you know, his manliness on her behalf, first of all. Second of all, my, my gut was like, I couldn't believe the standing ovation as well. And then I read that like um, Denzel Washington and Samuel Jackson all ran to to uh, to Will Smith during the break to check. Nobody gave a crap about Chris Rock. Like nobody said anything. I, I mean, granted, that was low hanging fruit, you know, of a joke. It wasn't, you know, like it wasn't front yeah. row was like, matter, you know. But you're in the public eye. It's the Oscars. Ricky Gervais right. has said far worse far worse at, at any of the award ceremonies that he's hosted he's he's leveled you know some people in a in a huge meaner way in, in my opinion and we're at this point like I, I that if you if you're a comedian is this something you got to worry about now it is someone's, someone's gonna it, it, walk it, right it, up it, and smack you yeah and and this the sad part of it was i love when people like what a cruel thing to say and i was like okay if calling you G.I. Jane is a cruel thing to say, you've never been fat, you've never been black, you've never been LGBTQIA+, right, you've never right, been a woman. Right, you've right. It's like, don't tell me that G.I. Right. Jane is the worst thing anyone's ever said. You know, it's Honestly, like, in this day and age, in this right. day and age, you know, every, you know, it's like four years that we've had, people have been called way worse. But yeah, the well, whole thing is just mind I, I think what it did was it brought also so much attention to the fact uh, that she has alopecia which yeah. I don't think most people even knew and I, I think that's why well I didn't know I didn't know but I, I think that that's why he got upset right like he yeah. thought that it was like a shot at her for that but you're right I mean she looked beautiful she kind of smiled and you know Hold her eyes, like she she was was like, like as she offended by her. that yeah, I mean, I don't think she was as offended by that as he made that out to be such a terrible thing that was said. So really it kind did. of brought more attention to that. One of the that it one wasn't of the, such a terrible thing. Yeah, it, and and that's that's great. Like I I told you before, there's a show over here called Made in Chelsea, and one of the girls that's like the sex bomb of the show. Um, it, it finally, after twelve or thirteen years of being on the show, she's she's fessed up that she's dealing with alopecia, and now she's like you know, a big advocate for it. And she's from, you know, promotes the, all the different medications and, and clinics and therapies and all that kind of stuff. So she's, she's kind of, you know, putting a spotlight on it. And I get that it's probably a terrible thing, but I also think that, you know, Jada's made it public and, you know, maybe Chris knew, maybe he didn't, it was still a crappy thing to say, but like you said, Frank, like, you know, there's been way worse said, and I just, I don't know. Like, I, I just thought that the whole thing was such a, a uh, there's been so many different takes. Like Howard Stern was saying, where was security? I don't think anybody, well, yeah. I thought about that too. And I thought to myself, I feel like everybody for the first instant thought it was going to be a bit like five, right. even, even Chris Rock, well, right. people are like saying, Oh, well he braced for it. And I was like, I think he thought it was going to be a stage punch. I think he yeah. was gearing up because it was going to be a funny bit that they were exactly. going to do together. Exactly. Not, oh, I'm going to really slap the crap out of him, which is what he ended <laughs> up doing. I And also it's like, alopecia jokes are not cruel. I'm sorry. They're just, not, you know, it, it's your wife is a whore and your children aren't yours. That's cruel. Yeah. 
you know, right. you know right. you're a closet case. That's mean. You know, it's probably true, but it's mean, right. you know, uh, to do that to someone. But right. it's just, if if you have to worry about a G, and it's a G.I. Jane joke. It was about short hair. It wasn't about alopecia. Right. And, and, and right. then you get someone like Tiffany Haddish saying she thought it was the most beautiful thing she'd ever seen. It's like, lady, you're, I, I'm not saying cancel them from the business, but I cancel people from my life, you know. <laughs> Very I'm much canceled. so. Yep. Bill Smith, I canceled in '93 when he said homophobic things when he was making uh, that his fans wouldn't accept him kissing another man while he played a hustler in uh, Six Degrees of Separation. It's like you know what? Then don't take the role of a hustler right. if you can't kiss another man. Sorry, right. do it. Do something. Don't. I don't care if you don't want to play that. But yeah. don't take the role, cash the check, and then not do the job. Right. Like, right. The job is you're supposed to kiss a man. That's and right. And it's like, if that's what the script calls for and you read it, you do it. Or, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, Denzel counseled him back then that your fans won't be able to handle it. So, you know, I mean, it's just, sorry. I do that. I make these like, little mental yeah. notes, too, along the way. I want, you know. Are you when... sure you're not Italian? Are you Italian anywhere in there? That's, <laughs> oh, am. yeah. Oh, that's an Italian thing to do. Oh, yeah. We're just like, yes. oh, no, I'll forgive you. I'm just never going to forget it. It's like, yeah. oh, no. Right. It's like, right. oh, no, 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 no. She is, oh. too. She is, too. So, yeah, we yeah, got it. Yeah, we know what this is like. It's it's unbelievable. I swear I was like, you know, and the thing like eating my feelings like all day, Monday and Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know what to I do with it. I felt the same. I didn't know what to do with those feelings. I, I And it just, and people are like, it wasn't even really about, it, it was about getting away with violence that In the world wants. On a world stage. On a world stage. And, and it was kind of like, don't believe your eyes. It's yeah. like, we all watched it. It's like, I, right, right. <laughs> exactly. And then this bullshit with the Academy saying, well, you know, one person was sitting over there and another person was sitting over there and we really didn't have time to convene and figure out what we were going to do. And so they just put a blanket statement out that we don't condone violence. And it was like, well, apparently you do. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> right. Now, if someone had come out and said, we are going to continue with the show, but the Academy feels this cannot go unmentioned. Good. And we we do not, in the moment, the next person out said, we do not condone this violence. Now that they should have aired, like Academy. we didn't get that. Yeah. We didn't get that over here because we get a very condensed version, which no, I was- they didn't say, they didn't say that. I'm saying that's what they should have they, said. Oh, you know? oh, no, they yeah. didn't say, I'm saying yes. the next, person you saw after that happened should have been right. the head of the academy right. on that stage mm -hmm. right walking up and saying something yeah you do not condone i don't do you take the the award away from him no i don't think do no. you throw him out of the academy probably yeah yeah you know, going forward yeah. yeah i would yeah yeah I, definitely. well they they talked about taking away his oscar right or did i just was that they, they, was, that was one of the things they, yeah they they've got like a lot of different things that they can do, they just have to decide what they're going to do. Um, but there has, yeah, there has to be some accountability. And I feel like he knows that. He knows that. He knows it's coming because he was doing damage control by putting out his Instagram. Because there he was in his acceptance speech saying, "I'm sorry." Never said, "I'm sorry" to Chris Rock. You know, never said. You know, right, right, just, right. You know, so yeah, he was doing damage control, and I, and I, I don't, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel like Chris Rock needed to. To put a statement out there at all i feel like you know and he did you know he, he said he was sorry for the joke and he crossed the line but i don't know that he did you know i i, mm, I don't that's know not did. crossing a line it's not crossing anything that's just dumb yeah it, it's i no i'm sorry i'm totally team team comedians you know i stand with the comedians yeah. and yeah think, because this is also, a it's dangerous like, yeah. Did he get up and say, I did a bad, bad thing? No, he got up and said, love makes you do crazy things. It's like, no, love makes yeah. you eat a pint of ice cream. You know, <laughs> love makes you yell about nothing. Lo yeah. You know, love does uh, not make you slap someone on the face in front of 15 million people. You yeah. know, yeah, that's just gross. And, yeah. and, and not, and you know what? It's, it, you can't always believe rumors and, and all that stuff. And Hollywood is full of that. But you know what? When someone has a reputation for being a sweetheart, generally they are. And when someone has mm -hmm. a reputation for not being very nice, they generally are right. You know, it, yeah. it, it, right. It, details might be wrong, but people, you know, 
That's true. Chris Rock is generally thought to be a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Will Smith is considered is generally thought of to be an a hole. Yeah, and oh, and has been for decades. You know, yeah. and yeah. I want to hear from the woman who was on Fresh Prince who quit because she said she couldn't stand working with him. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. You know, it's like, pick yeah. her up if she's still alive. You know, yeah. find her and let's hear that statement. Um, right. Why she... Really? She, wow. You know, take that up. But... Yeah, I got a couple of friends uh, on Facebook and uh, uh, Jay, you know, Dan Renzi. Yes. Yeah. Old, yeah. old MTV, old MTV, real world Miami, Dan Renzi. He's a friend of mine. And he said uh, that he... He has a, he put out a very vague statement on his Facebook thing saying that he know he knows that they're not nice people. The the Smiths are not nice people. And, oh. and then everybody's going, tell us why, tell us why, tell us why. And he said, I don't have to, I'm just telling you. I, you know, firsthand on authority, you know, I, mm. I know that, that they are. And, you know, I've heard that for, you know, about different people. And uh, like the whole Ellen thing, like when that was picking up steam and everybody yeah, was saying, yeah. saying, Ellen's not as nice as you think she is. And all these people started coming forward and employees and whatnot. So there's always a little grain of truth behind those, those things. I, I think you're 100 on that. I think you're 100. Yeah. You, I think that, cause that's, that's such a vague concept, but you know, nice or not nice, but it's, you know, it's not like saying this one can't get off unless they're pooped on you know whatever you're not it's not awful right. specific things you know it's it's like you just say whether someone's reputation is like this one's a sweetheart this one's not right or right. you know and and you tend to know who's who's prickly and who's who's uh right right you know whether are, you, are they prickly or just a prick you know i mean sometimes <laughs> some of them are curmudgeonly and but worth it and other ones are are awful right. Yeah. But they make a lot of money, and and ultimately that's that's what matters. And yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's uh, yeah. You just start, you know, it's it's crazy because like I, I that moment at the end with Lady Gaga and Liza Minnelli was so touching, you know. And I feel like everybody's mouths were still slowly going back up, and they, <laughs> they didn't give that moment the credit that it deserved. Yeah. Now it's starting just now. That's what people were saying. Yeah, yeah it was people like really. Say, well, the Hollywood hospice lady, like she. I know that's what I kept saying. It's like she's a hospice nurse now. Who the hell designated her as then? She's like, how many other old people does she have to minister to? It's like, oh my god, Gaga. It's like, hey, honey, you know, stop already. It's um, so cute, though. It's adorable. She, yeah, no, I really think that she feeds off of their, uh, you know, their legend. You know, like yeah. she, she, yeah. she, she does. She yeah. feeds off that, and and it's done her good. I mean. You know, like I didn't appreciate House of Gucci. I did, we we tried to watch everything all in one weekend, and I think by the time we got, we watched Spencer, we watched Being the Ricardos, and by the time, oh. we, by the time we got to House of Gucci, I'm like, is this is like a cartoon? Like this is yeah, yeah. The it really was. Jared Leto's performance was the campiest thing ever. I mean, that's a, that's showgirls level campy. I mean, that, that was, was that was yeah. hilarious. That was but, um, even even Al Pacino's even Al Pacino's. Oh my I'm god! Like, well, he, they had uncles like that, you know. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, it's true. Right, yeah. right. We, it. we, we all that's have why, one. That's why Joe. I can't watch Joe Pesci and anything because he scares me. Because it's like, oh my god, it's like being home and you're my relatives when I'm like, <laughs> and I'm terrified of you. Awkward, um, uncomfortable. That is come true. Out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But he, he, he although he was good yeah. in that. What was it, the? The last Scorsese, the thing that is still going on somewhere, the Irishman, I guess it was. He was good in that. There's still, I, I sat for that three years ago. I'm still watching it. I mean, it's just like it's that went on and on and on and on. I wouldn't even. I didn't even put a foot in. I didn't even put a foot in. I'm like, I don't have that kind of attention span. I was nervous about House of Gucci. I was like, oh, if anything that's over two hours, I start getting squirmy and I can't. Yeah. I we can't watched Licorice it. Pizza after the Oscars, and I hadn't seen that one. And uh, I was the only one that enjoyed it, but it it was good for me because I'm not good with plot. I never know what the hell's going on, so there is no plot. So it's like, oh well, good. Then I could follow this. That's it's that's just funny. Oh, they fall in love. Okay, I'm, that's the whole story. Good. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's melancholy. They fall in love. It's just it's just weird enough. We're done. Okay, and two hours and fifteen minutes later, it's over. Okay, good. I but, yeah, uh, I didn't I didn't yeah. didn't get to see that one. I've saw I've seen a lot of people commenting on it, and I didn't see Drive My Car. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I love the line. Titles. 
was it Amy Schumer? Who's, it was Amy Schumer or Wanda Sykes who said that they've already watched uh, The Power of the Dog three times. I finally finished it. <laughs> That's really a good joke. I, you know, and people is. were like, people were saying that was way crueler than, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's like punching up is never cruel. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you are deflating millionaires, billionaires, not struggling artists, you right. Know, we right. used to do, we would do, and, and I wouldn't do it now, certainly, but I would do the worst, like Mickey Rooney and Breakfast at Tiffany's kind of voice talking <laughs> about the, which is horrible, talking about uh, the director of Brokeback Mountain. And, and we would talk about this and I said, you know what, making fun of a guy who doesn't sound that way is really <laughs> smart and successful. Mm -hmm. Is it's not in good taste. It's in terrible taste. <laughs> but it's not. You're not making fun of the guy who brought you your your orange chicken. You if you make fun of a delivery boy, you're an asshole. Right. If you mm -hmm. make fun of the director, it's in bad taste. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you're you're punching up. You know. Yeah. I mean, the idea that he would get his R's and L's wrong, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a horrible joke and, and offensive, but it's not offense. It's not cruel yeah. the way it would be if you're picking on someone struggling for a living, new to the country, just making their right. ends meet. Yeah. That's really low and mean mm -hmm. um, and yeah, acting like you're better than someone. Just... If you're acting like, if you're yeah. taking the piss out of someone you revere, even in a low way, you're still... <laughs> Revering them, you know, and, and yeah, that's and a good point. Way. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I, yeah. I yeah. think, yeah, you know, some there's a homeless woman with alopecia, and you call her Kojak, you're an asshole. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you make fun of Jada Pinkett Smith, you're not maybe not be the nicest thing, but you're not, you know, you're not treating someone whose life is on the skids like they're garbage right Do you know right. what i mean you're making yeah. fun of someone who's got everything the world could give them right except her, right you know, <laughs> you know then as a bold woman myself i was not offended okay <laughs> that's all i'll say <laughs> i love that that's perfect so so frank i did a little uh research because i knew you were coming on the show and i i went on youtube and i saw that you have a cookbook called recipes from dead celebrities oh the dead cookbook. celebrity cookbook oh, I, have yeah. two dead, I have two I, dead uh, celebrity cookbooks and uh among idea. my five books yes so. so how did you get uh how did you get that idea and how did you get the, the recipes how did that um, work out a grave robbing no i um <laughs> <laughs> i was i had collected for many years i was an avid flea marketer and i still love it but i don't do it nearly with the, I used to go every weekend to the flea market in New York when when they still had uh, vacant lots in in Chelsea and the Flower District and stuff. I used to, go, you know, they had these huge areas that weren't built up yet. They're right. all gone now. They're all high rises now. <laughs> but we would go and um, you'd go and you'd meet every Sunday and go. And um, I bought furniture. I bought collectibles. I bought tiki mugs. I bought Batman things. I bought you know everything. Um, and one of the things I collected was anything that had a celebrity recipe. In it. And huh? you do, I think the secret about why a lot of people do what they do for a living is to justify their own taste and justify their own craziness. <laughs> and I was like, with all we'll this passion, I've got a, <laughs> what? We'll passion. Passions. Yeah, no, right. insanity, I think. Right. But I, um, I had all these cookbooks and uh, and I thought, you know, I got to figure out what to do with these. And what gave me the idea was I had intern after intern at Sirius uh, when I was doing the radio show. And these kids didn't know who the hell I was talking about ever, you know? And, <laughs> and, um, and I, my parents both died and I started to think a lot about what one leaves behind and uh, wanting people to remember the performers that influenced my sensibilities. So I thought, well, here's a way to do it with a cheeky title. And the only thing disrespectful was calling it the Dead Celebrity Cookbook. It was, <laughs> it was love letters to character actors who, whose names people didn't know, 
to mm -hmm. great comedians, to yeah. uh, to gay pioneers. It was, um, you know, Liberace sticky buns recipe is in there. And it's like, <laughs> Liberace sticky buns? Um, okay, that they're quite delicious as it turns out. Who knew? But uh, <laughs> Other than Scott Thorson, his his man, his, uh, his he knew all that that his sticky buns were delicious. But uh, it, you know, it was uh, a a way to sort of um, memorialize uh, these performers, and also I think I I do think it was part of the grief of uh, of losing my parents, you know, over a ten year period. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it was that sense of oh, we're not here for very long. Let's see if I can do something to help people remember people I've adored. And so that's where the cook came from. Yeah. Some of the recipes are very good. Uh, some of them are dreadful. Um, <laughs> and I say that, in, but it was really, the, the, ex, the recipe was the excuse to write about the performer. The, per, the performer, yeah. You know, Isabel was... Sanford's wheezy chicken is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate to, hate to say it's horrible, uh, but it's um, however, you know, Harriet Nelson's, uh, uh, chicken bake is a heart attack on a plate but uh <laughs> you know it's it's uh worth you know but still it's it's uh you know it's delicious it's, so. i it's think it was such idea. a idea yeah such a great Thank idea you. yeah really yeah. really cool idea. and you're such a great cook i mean baker yeah, pretty darn good we gained all, so much weight during covid quarantine oh my oh, god like, what did you just you just put something out just last week or something, it would it had pecans on the top, and I'm like, oh yeah, I did you it. Need to be friends. It was a. Him. <laughs> I've been looking. Yeah, my neighbor and I get on famously. We she makes the best chocolate chip cookies I've ever eaten in my life. Oh. So she brings those over constantly, and I'm like, here, taste this cake, see what you think. Um, <laughs> and we haven't gotten to savory yet. Although I bring quiche over once in a while because I do make a pretty mean quiche. Um, because I'm a gay, but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I I made a. Uh, it was called. Banana cake with uh with caramel frosting, C A R hyphen M E L frosting, and I had found it I think in the white trash cookbook years ago, <laughs> and I couldn't find the cookbook in my archives, and I must have either typed I don't know how where I found I did find it and typed it into my computer over the holidays, and so I brought it back uh, and I was like I got to make this the first excuse oh it's so good I I posted the I rest. knew it I knew I, I wish okay. it was a scratch and sniff because I was like I can't. Oh, it was, it was wrong, but I forgot to put the pecans in, so I put them on top, which was the best thing because then I added uh, that crystallized sugar, that that not sanding sugar, but that heavier crunch. You know, gave it a crunch, oh. and uh, and I did that, and then I hit it with a couple of twists of salt. So uh, it was the salty oh. sweet pecan, yeah, caramel wow. butter, brown sugar. Uh, it was rocking. It, was it's, really it just like ticks all my boxes. Anything with like <laughs> I've I've ticked your box. My father would be so I ticked a lady's box. My father would not <laughs> rank out. I, my box. Finally, after I think all we these just, years, here's the title of this episode: Frank DeCaro ticks my yes. box. Yep, yes, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Box, that's it. box ticker is going right on my new business card. That's going to be the <laughs> box. Cork. Yeah, perfect. That's I'm working cool. on a new book now on disco. This is my new thing. So I get oh, to watch this. I yeah, get to watch is, like really Lola Lola Let's wrap with this. Let's wrap with this. <laughs> This I was going to say, I've been watching like um, Lola Falana specials from the late 70s. And uh, my cousin was her hairdresser. I'm not lying about that. My cousin was her hairdresser. This is oh, what? <laughs> he worked degrees. in Las Vegas in the 70s <laughs> and he did Lola Falana's hair. And I was little and I would tell everybody and no one knew who she was. So, I, I, and I didn't know that that was kind of code for, you know, he's gay. Oh, right. Yeah. There's that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's why I watch them. But no, so I'm doing this new book, so, but it's fun because you know you get to uh, call, you know, you sit and wait for the village people Indian to call you, and then you're like, oh, Felipe, how are you? So I talk <laughs> to him. He said, oh, I'll hook you up with Gloria Gaynor, and then I talk to her, and you know. So uh, the only thing is, some of them are getting, you know, I, I was there was a, a, a quite a giant in the field without naming names, and I, and they were like, no, for personal reasons, he can't do it. And I thought, oh, I wonder if it's just because he's too old now. You know, that could very well be the reason. That could but, be. Uh, but uh, you know, you, you, so we'll, we'll make do. I'm writing, I'm, I'm working on a little piece about, uh, if we're in the book, about uh, the Ethel Merman disco album. So that's been a fun place to, to concentrate for the last Oh, year. my God. <laughs> I, I can't words, make it. I never imagined those words in a sentence together. Right? Oh, you don't have, 
oh my god you or download it on on apple to whatever it's called apple music or itunes or whatever. i am going to oh know. my god it's, it's the worst thing ever it's so <laughs> it's so dreadful and then <laughs> it turns out there are more things like that that I, you know, even I didn't know, but you'll be looking, you're like, Anne Margaret did a disco album? Well, now <laughs> I have to look at the, So there's an Anne. Yeah, I keep finding things. Oh, and, that's uh, fantastic. And it's good oh, to be. It's going to be a great book. I yeah. hope it's due in September. <laughs> that's the only frightening thing is it's like really, you know, I mean, oh, I've, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got my checklist. Do you see any checks on the checklist? Oh, I did that. No, nothing's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a thousand things that have to get done. It's always, it's always like that. It, it's, that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's, but that's going to be fantastic because, you know, I tell you, I'm fascinated by that whole Studio 54, you know, thing. Yeah. Like I watched a documentary on it and I'm, yeah. I'm you know. It's, it's a, it's a fascinating period. And the, the book looks at it as being that, that the disco sucks, disco demolition night movements, all of that anti-disco sentiment was yeah, really... Yeah misogynistic and homophobic and yeah. racist because the people who were getting ahead were people of color gays and women and that was that would not do and so um it talks about basically that it sort of was the maga movement of its day and uh and, and so that's kind of the gist of uh, where it starts but ultimately it's a very it's a big celebration of, of <laughs> discos you know and that it didn't and that disco didn't die even though they said it did it didn't it became, it, it became didn't. house. It didn't. It became, no, dance, it became hip hop. It became electronic dance music. It became it the is. soundtrack to the Target commercials a couple of years ago. <laughs> you know, when, when your Christmas song is a remake of I Feel Love by Donna Summer, sung by an openly queer Sam Smith, things have changed. <laughs> yeah. You know? so we're we're, finally, that, we're, we're getting that, that. Those are big strides there. Those are big strides. Yeah. There's so, the episode yeah. name. Disco yeah. didn't die. <laughs> Disco didn't die. No, I, I want to be the box ticker. I, yeah, I like that. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's so funny. Frank, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day to do this. What a oh, it's so my like pleasure. I said, I've been a fan, you know, for, for ages, and it's just uh, it's just an absolute thrill to have I'm you. I'm a new fan, new <laughs> fan here. <laughs> I it's like when fun. rock and rollers are my fans. I need that. <laughs> Even if I'm writing a disco book. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. But, yeah. But that's, send me links and I'll post them and and uh, yeah. uh you know we'll we'll make sure people watch and uh and it's fun. And thank you. A lot of times podcasts turn out to be hostage situations where they go on for hours. And you know, so thank you for <laughs> thinking. This was love just enough. <laughs> that's what i said about the disco book like how deep you're going i was like yeah. just enough information that's what it's i'm gonna perfect do. it's perfect i yeah and i'm i'm really looking forward to the to the book and uh and your next facebook post dear god your next thing you. post. <laughs> i take social media way too seriously hey if people could i would love it if they would follow me at frank de caro show and also if they're interested in in RuPaul, then they need to get my drag book coming through the it's called drag coming through the big wigs of show business yes because it really is a, a a good primer on uh on on what you need to know about drag before during and after it's RuPaul's yeah, drag race fantastic. so uh i, I included your cover in my uh in my in my little uh reel on because i, I love saw it. that yeah. yeah it's great well i'm doing self-promotion self-aggrandizement and self-promotion perfect perfect and i will be starring in gi jane three so i'm very excited <laughs> about that so please i'm ending yeah, it on that. we're going into production i'm very I am ending it on that you're an absolute delight thank you sir bye Frank. nice to see you bye it's like never stop chasing your dreams uh -huh. there, okay. yeah, see <laughs> see we drank way too much whiskey.